How are you doing, Tony? Good, thanks, yeah. Um, how has the week gone for you in terms of training? And uh, what's the game plan for tomorrow? Simple as that. Yeah, look, we've had a really positive week. Um, players have been brilliant, staff have been brilliant. Lots of changes, you know, as you can imagine, and bringing in new staff and merging in new players and young players coming in, and it's been really excellent. Lots of positive vibes. Um, players enjoying themselves really focusing and yeah really positive vibe for tomorrow you'll have to wait and see what the game plan is but what we'll say is you know we've no um we won't be underestimating northern ireland and we'll be you know taking it super serious so we'll be here to put on a good performance and come away with three points katie there's been many landmarks in your career but they're talking about thirty-eight thousand people at the moment yeah i mean you, you've had sydney in the world cup but that's a phenomenal amount of people to What's the women's team? Yeah, it's, I mean, 38,000 is pretty incredible, right? Um, who would have thought we'd be here um, off the back of a World Cup playing our first ever game here at the Aviva Stadium? Um, I'm hoping all 38,000 come tomorrow. I know that's obviously tickets sold, but if you do have a ticket, come out to the game, come see us um, and support us. But no, it's fantastic. I was actually reminding Eileen in the car on the way here. <laughs> Um, the last goal I scored against her here as well. So <laughs> I was just reminding Kate she's lived off that ever since. It's a fluky goal, but look, it is, it is. so we, it's not our first rodeo here. Well, no, um. we've, we've had plenty of battles here. Um, obviously, back in the, the women's national league days, playing for Heaney and when you were managing, obviously, um, P. Milton DLR. So yeah. happy to be on the good side of, of things now. Um, but not really looking forward to it, to be honest. Have you put yourselves under extra pressure since the World Cup, do you think? Do you have to prove that tomorrow? Look, there's going to be expectation on us now. Um, we're a team that have qualified for our first ever major tournament. And with that, there's, there's more eyes on us, there's more people watching us, there's more opinions on us. Um, and we understand that, but we also want to embrace that pressure as well. Um, playing for your country, it's always a massive honour, but you have to perform. You have to perform at the highest level. And each and every single one of us in the squad know that. Um, and yeah, we'll be we'll be looking to, to give it 100% obviously tomorrow. Um, the Nations League, it's new for us all. Um, but we'll be in, uh, embracing the experience um, tomorrow, of course, making history. But there's also a game to play. And like Eileen said, we won't be underestimating Northern Ireland um, at all. I think, is there a change in, in terms of style of play or game plan? Yeah, well, you know, Tony, we were working on being really adaptable and flexible, allowing a lot of... Um, freedom for players to problem solve and make their own decisions and that's really what we've been working on in, in, in training that players are able to identify um, particular situations and then they can adapt and make a decision within that and that you know allows for creativity on the pitch so, because once the players step over the line it's essentially their decision so we've been allowing that, that freedom to happen um, and then again of course not underestimating uh, Northern Ireland, also a team with major tournament experience, a new, very highly experienced uh, head coach in. So, yeah, paying attention to all aspects of the game, but really promoting that adaptability. Thank you. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about the defender, Caitlin Hayes, who's linked up with the, the squad this week? Yeah, so we've had Caitlin in training with us, as you've read. She's eligible through her, her um, grandparents. Um, yeah, she's been a good addition having in, having in and around this week with us. She's had her citizenship approved, so that's as far as we are with that for the moment. Um, but yeah, she's, she's a good addition in with us uh, in the camp this week. What do you think she can add? I think she adds a lot of power. She's pretty dynamic and yeah, a real threat in the air. You've been involved in football for a long time. It must be a pretty special occasion to be able to go out there to, to, to be able to go out there to the Aviva with over thirty thousand people. It's, I mean, it's absolutely incredible. I mean, like you said, we've been involved in uh, football many years in Ireland. I've been involved in it more than Katie's been born. Um, <laughs> you know, so it's a real. I mean, I can't describe my love for Irish football. It's. It's in your soul, and I've stayed in Ireland, you know, deliberately and committed to Irish football. So, to walk out into the Aviva with thirty-eight thousand people, as Katie said, bums on seats now. Like, I mean, that's just the pinnacle of where we are right now, and we're hoping to drive that forward. But I can't think of a a, a bigger honour 
you know, to be involved in this moment. And it's monumentous for the players. And we really want to, you know, connect with the fans on that and give them a good experience. So, yeah, it's the biggest moment so far for us, I think, as a home nation. Yeah. Brilliant. And Katie, do you have any family coming to the occasion? Yeah, there'll be uh, a fair few of them now tomorrow. Um, 25,000. <laughs> 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 That's just mine and Denise's. Um, but uh, no, it's good. Look, it'll be a great day out. Um, of course, for my family, but everyone's family and friends, fans. Um, but like, yeah, we don't want this to be a once off team. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, yes, we love Tala. We have created uh, a lot of special memories in Tala. Um, we have great engagement with our fans in Tala, but this is this is the pinnacle, you know, um, playing in your national stadium. Um, so, yeah, I'm hoping, um, yeah, maybe we might see this going in the future. Puts a bit of pressure on the FAI, but, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic thing. And honestly, as Eileen said, myself and the girls, we, we cannot wait for tomorrow. It's going to be a, a spectacular day, and we hope we can give the performance and, and get the results for our fans to, to be happy with. Sorry. Okay, you talked there about um, the experience of, of uh, playing in the stadium um, and we've talked a little bit during the week, the, the experience of the different players within the squad, but it's a chance for the 38,000 that will come today, there's going to be a huge number, this will be their very first international uh, and maybe their first time in the Vita Stadium, so it's, it's a chance for, for you guys to inspire them on their, their journey. Yeah, exactly, look, I'm sure we've, we've picked up new fans along the way um, over the course of the summer. So it is, it's a showcase of, of what we're about as a team. Um, we want to obviously show the, the pride and the passion through our performances, but also we've, we've developed um, some kind of new styles this week, which we, which we can't wait to, to kind of showcase tomorrow. Um, we've always been yeah, defensively strong and solid, um, but we always had that attack and threat as well. Um, so hopefully tomorrow we can put all that together um, and obviously put on a, a great performance tomorrow. I mean, the, the game is very important for, for yourself, for everyone, the first game in the stadium, but it's also the first UEFA Nations League game, yeah. which is a real crucial role in qualification for the next Euros, the next tournament. This squad wants to get to get back to another tournament, so just talk to us about the importance of that. Yeah, I mean, it's, like you said, the Nations League, super important. We've been driving that message home all week within, within the camp, and nobody's taking that for granted. And as we've spoken about as a team, this is the first step on the road to qualification for Euros 2025. So we're not treating this in any other, any other manner as a competitive game um, that we won three points from. And we know this is the first step on a, on a, longer, on a longer journey. Yeah. Um, Eileen, what do you expect from Northern Ireland tomorrow? Obviously a new manager in there. Is there anything in particular that you're looking out for? Yeah, like you said, new manager, Tanya in huge wealth of experience and expertise, so I'd expect a very adaptable team. Of course, any new manager coming in galvanises new energy and squads in different ways. I'm sure Tanya is bringing her, her methods in, which will you know, cause right to stir within their team. So we're, we're expecting a really tough, tough challenge tomorrow. We're expecting, you know, the team to use their experience and their they've also qualified for a major tournament so like I said we're not underestimating anything um, and expecting that Tanya's the introduction of a new head coach will also drive them forward and you know they're going to come at us as well. And one for you Katie you spoke about legacy quite a lot during the World Cup how important is it to see that tomorrow both on and off the pitch? Yeah, I guess it'll be tomorrow when we when we see it in full and um, when we're walking out um, in front in front of the fans. Um, it's obviously our first game since the tournament. Um, and yeah, it's it. You know what? It's just it's just so exciting. I'm hoping we see thousands of girls and boys coming to cheer us on. Um, we've seen obviously all the support online over the course of the summer in Australia as well. But this will be the first time we actually feel it at home and. The fact we can do it here in our national stadium is uh, is incredibly special. Come on. Yeah, uh, Katie, can you talk to us a bit about Emma Byrne, the coach? Like we can see that she's not she's not the goalkeeping coach. Uh, we know she has her badges and stuff like that. But what's she been like this week as a coach? Never mind who she is. <laughs> no, she's been great. Honestly, um, I spoke earlier on in the week, um, like on Monday. Um, I, I've been so excited for her coming in. I think it's. Brilliant Ireland's brought her in um, to be part of the team going forward. 
Um, she's got so much experience, so when she talks, you listen. Um, she's been so um, <coughs> vocal on the pitch um, in terms of her coaching points, her level of detail um, in meetings and stuff. So, yeah, no, it's been, it's been really good, and I think... As I said as well during the week, like she's so respected from the whole team, and um, I'm just delighted she's she's part of it now um, because I think it'll really benefit us as a team going forward. So she might have a career in this. You'll have to ask her. <laughs> <laughs> I can just ask you on a practical level: Is there any much, if any, difference in the pitch dimensions between Tala and Eviva, and if so, does that impact in any way how you play? Uh, I think I think in terms was, of yeah, we've so, been yeah. training on. Um, in Abbottstown, yeah. same dimensions there as it is here, so all good. It's no bigger than Tala, is it? No. Okay. Hope not. Hope not, anyways. I'll <laughs> <laughs> we'll just ask about uh, Caitlin. I know she scored against you in the cup final, but just her. her Jesus, all right, Dave. Yeah. Leave it out, <laughs> big. She scored against me. Caitlin <laughs> scored against <laughs> me. <laughs> Can you just talk just about her football qualities, so though? What she might bring both of you in terms of, like, um, yeah, oh, I think she's she's got a good understanding of the game. She's comfortable on the ball. She wants to get on the ball. She's dominant defensively. You know, she has a real presence. So she's she's you know been a really good addition to us during the no, week in China. I agree. Yeah. yeah. No, I agree with Ayla. She's been like she's she's a physical player. Um, what I've liked about her is her calmness on the ball um, in terms of if we were looking to build up and when we establish play. So, um, yeah, bringing these, these sort of players back in. Um, obviously, we've seen it in the course of the, the, the previous campaign um, when players are, are available. Um, she's come in, got her head down and, and worked really hard this week and we we're obviously delighted with her getting the, the citizenship and also means more competition for places. So, so players need to be on their game um, every session. Um, because yeah, that that pool of players is really growing, um, and it's good now we're we're developing a, a squad with um, great strength and depth um, going forward. Hi, John. John. Yeah, William. Uh, just on Denise, um, we spoke her after the Nigeria game, and she said that she much preferred where she played in that game in terms of being one of the more advanced midfielders. Do you think that's where you, we see the best of her? I think wherever you put Denise, you'll see the best of Denise. So, but, but yeah, look, we, we want to have Denise on the ball. You know, she's one of our most creative players. Um, I think she can do that from multiple positions. She said she wants to play her. She plays deeper at her club, so very versatile. But you'll have to wait and see tomorrow where she occupies the pitch. But we still expect the same qualities to shine out. And just secondly there, we were speaking to Tanya earlier, like I think they, they probably only have five players who are in full-time professional environments, whereas you vast majority. Yeah. Does that make much of a difference? Yeah. Well, I mean, it, you look at that and you can say it should make a difference. It is different environments, it is different, you know, training hours and different resources that players have at them. Um, should make a difference doesn't mean it always translates like that. It's football, anything can happen, but we have to draw on that as a strength and, you know, emphasise that and try that to make that the point of difference. Yeah. Just, well, I mean, just, so just, yeah. just, just to elaborate on... Oh, sorry, uh, no? no just, just to elaborate on your, your um, point earlier about the occasion and stuff. Yeah. As someone who's been involved in women's football your entire life, basically, like, that's right, I'm could 32. Have you, <laughs> you, you seen the um, something like this from way back when? And, like, what are your memories of? Yeah, I mean, I have memories of, you know, I think I've, I could easily say I've been at, you know, 80% of home games here in Ireland. Um, could you envisage in those years 38,000 at a women's game? Yes. <laughs> 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 no, but you're always trying to drive standards and push. So I've been at games where you know you'd have a few mummies and daddies, a few parents, or a sister and a brother. Or, but we've steadily seen the growth and the potential for women's sport overall. 
and now women's football has always been there. And I think, you know, society has recognised that and it's driven it forward and women's football is now, you know, the fastest growing sport in the world and also that's reflected in Ireland. So I think with this group of players, with the World Cup qualification, with the, the growth of the game in general, what we're seeing, it's reflected. And with that has come the increased visibility and now we've got 38 tickets sold. We want those 38 ticket seats filled, or tickets, 1,000 seats filled. And yeah, <coughs> could I envisage it when I was standing in the rain and the lashing rain 25 years ago? Maybe not, but as the years have gone on and you, you, you watch the growth then. Or they are. made a great point to us earlier in the week in terms of the occasion. I hope you don't mind me sharing. Go for it. But <laughs> it's not just obviously about the, the squad tomorrow walking out. It's it's about everybody who's played their part over the, the course of the last few years, you know, the last 20, 30 years, obviously, since you've, you've been in women's football. It's the volunteers at your local clubs. It's the grassroots coaches that come out. It's the referees when you're 10 years old. You know what I mean? It's, it's everyone. It's moms and dads coming to drive their kids an hour to go training two, three times a week. So... It's not just about us tomorrow, it's about every single person that's played their part in women's football the last 20, 30 years. Um, it's you guys, it's media, it's you talking yeah. about it, writing about it. Um, it it's, it's about all of that together, you know. Um, we're just the lucky ones that will be able to play on the pitch tomorrow um, and really embrace it. And that's what is so important for us as players tomorrow to remember because... As I said, it's not just the eleven players going out; it's it's everybody that's played their part of the the last last few years. So, um, we we hold that incredibly proud tomorrow, and we'll be giving it an absolute battle tomorrow, um, and our hundred percent as always when we put on the green shorts. So, it's a credit to you guys as well. So, we appreciate it. Yeah, and I think you know just to reiterate what Katie said, there is a thank you to everybody that did everything in the past when nobody wanted to know anything, but there was, you know, people that wanted to continue to push women's football. You know, if you ask people about me, they hate me or love me because I've had a row with everybody in Ireland about p pushing for standards. If, you know, we didn't have the referees or we didn't have the same pitches and it was always to, to drive standards and have in place for the girls what, what we wanted to have. And I think people have stood up and responded to that. Us, the FAI, the media, and it's all come together at this moment and it's going to be in action tomorrow in the Aviva Stadium and that will be the representation of the progress that we've made and as Katie said, we're going to you know, bring our passion and our pride and really play our hearts out tomorrow. I'm just saying, just one more on that. I mean, um, like obviously 2017 and the World Cup are really visible kind of areas where progress is kind of made and so on, but from your point of view, anything in the background in those 20 or 30 years that might have been signposts towards where we actually... Yeah, well, I think we've had, you know, there's been a number of milestones. We had the introduction of the Women's National League. We've seen that expand um, down throughout the, the youth levels. Um, we've seen this year the introduction of professional contracts in, into the... Into the um, into the league, we've seen clubs add resources, we've seen criteria for coaches to be better around the women's game. And we, yeah, does it still need work? Absolutely, but it's moving in, in the right direction. And I think as the development of the game is going to happen, you're going to see a lot more um, around that, which will continue to drive. Okay, last couple of Queen and John, see where we are. Yeah. Katie, you were just wondering um, how Tyler Taylor's first week back with the, the squad tomorrow. She settled in well, isn't it? Good to have her back. Yeah, she's been great. Uh, look, Tyler just gets on, gets in and gets stuck in. I um, was chatting to her um, this morning, actually, it was. and No, sorry, it was last night. We were saying her first debut. Well, she made her debut against Northern Ireland, and obviously she's been away from the squad, and she's back in, and we're playing Northern Ireland. So it's funny how things work. <laughs> Um, but now, look, Tyler's been absolutely fantastic. Um, as I said, she gets her head down and, and gets working, and she'll be giving Eileen a headache. Um, looking to get on the pitch tomorrow, no doubt. Um, but yeah, no, she's, she's been great. Yeah, thanks. And how likely is she to be involved tomorrow? She 
she's as likely as the rest of the squad to be involved. She's <laughs> <laughs> like Kate said, you've got a lot of headaches, but that's part of the you know the role as the coach. But it's good to have that com- competitive you know arena as well, and that there's competition for places because it drives performance on, and it means you've got strength and depth within your squad. And as as Kate said. Tyler's come in, she's got her head down, she's applied herself really well and she's just slotted in like she belongs to be there, um, which is what she does. She's left, yeah. 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 Calvin, Eileen, um, the the women's rugby team got their first game here in 2014 and haven't got one since. How how important is it that we see this Katie's team back here every year? Yeah, I think, I think, you know, the crux of what you're talking about is the legacy piece and, you know, we've had conversations with rugby around driving our legacy piece and it's taking care of that post-major tournament um, sector. So when they qualified, what happened after that? What was the planning for that? So as part of our legacy piece, it's not about just looking at the World Cup and what happens there and activities around it. It's around developing those pathways. It's around you know, sustaining this progress and consistent qualifications for major tournaments and continuing to drive visibility with you guys and um, positive promotion of the women's game and as, as long as we continue to do that I think and sustaining you know a growing fandom then I wouldn't see why the progress shouldn't continue to show in in stadiums that represent that. So you, you, obviously Talis is important to this team but is it important that you, can you envisage every time there's a big match that it can come back here not necessarily every year but just it becomes a norm, not a one-on-one. Yeah, I mean, in my vision, yes. Yeah, I mean, if that's that's progress. And we're here today, and it's had a really good response. Tala will always be part of us. That was also part of the journey. And But progress is progress, and that means growth. And we have to respond to the growth and the need of the game. So I think that is what will happen naturally, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, just when you were talking earlier about um, you know falling out with people when you're trying to drive standards. If tomorrow was the kind of the high benchmark, what was the kind of low point where you felt I'm really banging my head against a brick wall here, I'm getting lower, and was there ever a point where you just had enough? Oh, I never had enough. So I'm still here. So I mean, it's Close to had enough, yeah. I mean, you you can feel that every day, but it, it's it's inherent in you. You want to push it so. You understand that you're going to have the, these conversations along the way, and you also understand that clubs are also doing their best with capacity that we have, but it still takes people to, to drive and push and argue and advocate on behalf of the women's game. And there's really good people in Ireland who've done that clubs, volunteers, coaches, and here's where we are because of that. The team have drove it from their, from their aspect, the players have drove it, the coaches have drove it, the clubs have drove it, the federation has, has drove it, and that's, within that you'll have disagreements and conflict, but you're always, your motive is to drive standards, and that's, that's where I've come from. Um, I mean, I was a volunteer, I was a volunteer, standing on, on lines, freezing, letting her score fluky goals against <laughs> me, you know, and, but that, that was part of the game. And we've evolved, and now now we're in a position to continue and be consistent with that, and then become that it's not such a major issue to qualify for a campaign that we should be there and we expect to be there, and that's where we're going, right? Yep. All right. So we've made an agreement, and that's where we're going. Yeah. Well, last one, Katie. Just from a player's perspective, we've seen in the men's game how much the Nations League has improved, just general standards and having more competitive games has been a, a big positive in the men's game. How is it feeling among the squad for having more regular competitive fixtures with the introduction of it? Yeah, I think it's a really good thing, um, to be honest. I think um, to have the bit of structure, like post-World Cup, would, have I, would I have loved it in October to start? Yeah, because we've not had a lot of time post-World Cup um, from a club football point of view. but. Um, yeah, look, it is what it is now. Um, but look, we're excited for it. It's competitive, competitive games. You always want to be playing competitive football, especially for your country. So we're all geared up for it. Um, we've got big games coming up in the next three windows, um, and we want to be. Our goal is to top the group, um, and they're the standards we've set for ourselves. And um, yeah, we'll be giving it our all tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.